that must be used to address the opioid epidemic. And so, roughly speaking, half the money goes to the state to decide where it's going to go, half the money goes to local jurisdictions, cities and counties. Just to give you some high-level numbers, and by the way, this is not even, uh, some of the 1.1 billion that we've recovered, there's one big case that's still being litigated, so we won't see that money for a little bit, it's got to get resolved. So not counting that one, um, Pierce County, the county itself is getting 31 million, Tacoma 14 million, other cities in Pierce County obviously getting smaller amounts, but money as well. Um, I think it's Spokane County, the county's getting 24 million, Spokane, the city, 13 million, um, King County, 60 million for the county, city of Seattle, 28 million, other jurisdictions as well. So it's it's a lot of dollars going directly to the city councils that you cover, right? And the county councils you cover, they will make those decisions. Sometimes those jurisdictions can work together and pool their resources if that makes sense for them. But I just highlight that for you because I think how that money is spent is important. Um, our job is to get those resources to those communities, but it's up to those communities to decide how this is spent. It. Um, and, uh, and we're going to continue bringing these cases and trying to get more resources to address a uh, big issue that we have as a state. I'm going to stop there and open up to any questions uh, that you might have. Yes? Keith Shipman with Washington State Association of Broadcasters. We have some 20 broadcast executives from across the state joining us today. Um, thank you for the VNO tax relief for newspapers. We're concerned that broadcasters weren't included in that package. And can we respectfully ask, why not? We're facing the same challenges. Yeah. With the decline in revenues, with the decline in staffing, we need that help too. We'd be happy to chat with you about that. It ain't everyone wants to get down and chat about it. So this was a bill that I believe had been proposed last year that had really not gone anywhere. And so we picked up that bill to, to move it essentially. So that was the vehicle that we were working off of. But be happy to sit down and chat anytime and be happy to share my number before I walk out of here and, and talk about that. I mean, I, what I would say is that I won't go to me. I, my views about, I think there's a direct line between the demise of media, right, whether it's what we're doing or local newspapers, and the challenges that, that we all see with threats to our democracy and, and, uh, and really a pretty fundamental our way of life. So I have to have a conversation about to understand better what those challenges are for you. I have some sense, but to get a better sense of it and, and have a longer conversation. And by the way, Joyce is here as well, and we're already still up. Joyce, make sure I grab you what's a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. I hope that. Thanks for your support for the VNO tax. Yeah. Have, have you given any more thought to joining the Department of Justice and the agency? I thought you might ask this. Yeah, I, I asked it often. <laughs> you, you got made up your mind whether you might join the Google case yeah. or EdTech, which yeah. the DOJ has been very clear about <coughs> really arming publishers mm -hmm. like us. And so I'm curious to know if you're going to join those eight states. Yeah, what I can say, Breyer, is uh, what I can say is so that case has my full attention. Okay, so it's, it's we're very much aware of it. Uh, we don't talk about our investigations, so I, as you know. But what I can say, so speak, taking a half step back, is that um, often when there's these big cases like that, well, like Oakville is a good example, and there's states involved in that case as well. Um, one thing I spend time thinking about is whether it makes the most sense for Washington to join a case like that, or let's say Oakville's case, or to do something on our own. The Albertsons Kroger merger, for example, right? Some AGs did something challenging that $4 billion payout. We filed our own lawsuit here in Washington. So sometimes, I, unlike most AGs, we have the resources, the ability to sometimes bring our own cases in a wide range of cases. And so that's one that I think about a great deal. One thing I can say to, about that case is um, the Department of Justice will be amending their complaint. I think it's like March 27th is sort of the deadline where they can do that as of right without having to ask the court permission to amend their complaint. And that's a logical point by which the Department of Justice could add states who, for whatever reason, weren't ready to decide right at that moment in time and could be added to the complaint. So what I can tell you is there will certainly be a decision before that date on that issue. And so, um, I mean, as you know, we've been pretty engaged on these issues, and so this one has my attention. But I think what's important on the case of that magnitude is I'm very involved in the decision making and I have lots of thoughts on these subjects and what's the best way to litigate, best way to use our resources, and the best way to get the result we want as a state for big cases. And so sometimes I take a little more time than folks, you know, uh, even in my office want or others, but but it has my attention, I can assure you. Yeah. So just stay tuned, but you'll be my first phone call. I've already told the team knows you're my first phone call. Yeah. What was the 